Shema everyone, it's Johnny VR here and welcome back to my Doctor Who Flux review for this week. Today I'm going to be reviewing Chapter 2, which is titled War of the Sontarans. And before I kick off, I just want to say that it is Shaq's birthday today and Shaq, as many of you will know, is also making videos on this channel. So be sure to go and check out his videos as well. Comment and wish him a very happy birthday. So happy birthday Shaq. Okay, so now we're going to go into the uh, spoiler-free part of the review. The first part will be spoiler-free. Before going into the spoiler part of the review, and so I'll give you notice then. So be sure to watch the episode, come back, hear my thoughts, then comment down below, and we can have a discussion in the comments section. And then pop to over to the end of the video where I give my final verdict and score. So, War of the Sontarans. Um, I liked it. Overall, I liked the episode. Overall. There was a few moments, a few moments that I kind of um, feel that were a bit um, unlikely. Like, this is what I had before sometimes where the sci-fi itself uh, was a bit off, like story-wise. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I like the episode, which makes it feel like when I say um, a few things, like in the spoiler-free parts, I can, I'll feel like I'm nitpicking a little bit. Overall, uh, I think it was a good episode. It was, all, it was pretty much a full hour, um, which is really good. I think if it was um, 50 minutes, like if it was like the, the usual time for an episode, I don't think it would have uh, been that good because it had like, with with a full hour, it had time to introduce more characters, tell the story. Um, if it was any shorter, like it would feel um, more rushed. But overall, I really like the story. I'll tell you the nitpicks in the spoiler section. Um, it does uh, pick up immediately after last week's episode, and it it sort of. And quite surprisingly, actually, it it sort of splinters again. So, uh, like, what I was saying about the last episode was that everyone sort of came together in groups and, and the storyline started to um, come together. Now they sort of split off again. Um, and, you know, I wasn't expecting that. But uh, overall, I think it works. And I think it works because there's more episodes to come. Um, so... Overall, yeah, there's there's a couple of storylines, some new characters, um, each have their own sort of time to develop, and we get to see some of the main characters in different circumstances uh, than, I, than I might have expected. Uh, the end of the episode, again, was a good cliffhanger. Like, it makes me want to find out what happens next. So, like, I'm really happy because everybody knew that it was going to be this sort of ongoing story which meant that they knew that the first episode was going to end in a cliffhanger but now that the second episode also ends in a cliffhanger we can expect it to be like this for the rest of the series um so it's a good feeling it's really cool uh that the story will continue and like you have to tune in you can't afford to miss it because otherwise you won't find out what happens uh, i like this feeling it's a, it, it it really is a good. Um, uh, what else would I say about this? War of the Sontarans as a Sontaran story, I liked it a lot. I think it was not only is it sort of a Sontaran story that means that they um, they have their part to play. They it also justifies their appearance in the previous episode as well, um, and they are. A considerable threat in the episode and I did like that a lot um, like I've I've said for a while I wanted to see them in a proper story again and and, and this is it this is a um, a good story um, and the Centaurans get some great lines there's some great music there's some great fighting uh, overall I think they get some awesome villain lines and um, they are a threat to be reckoned with uh, especially uh, in the period which they find themselves in um, and yeah um, it does it it does leave it open as well uh, for the rest of the story as well so it's not like um, it doesn't appear that that's it 
for them it uh, th there's there's lots more to come um, not every story arc from the f from the previous episode was picked up again um, which means that you know there'll be more time dedicated to that in future episodes but a lot more story arcs that were picked up made some sort of appearance um, to sort of progress that story onwards as well uh, and other characters made appearances as well overall um, I like the episode I have a few nitpicks like only a couple of nitpicks about it um, and I think as a Sontaran story it was very cool I thought the I like the new design which is more classic design um, and I like the the overall story um, and I liked how much of a threat they were um, each of the, I liked also how each of the main characters gets a chance to do their own thing uh, and be their own character um, it, it, there's in previous seasons where they've all been um, in a group together sometimes in certain episodes some characters take a back seat um, in this episode they each get a chance to do um, to be themselves and to have a go at uh, solving problems and you know things like that so overall I really like the episode um, there's not much more I can say here without going into spoilers so this is your spoiler warning I'm gonna go into spoilers now okay so um, this Sontaran story I like um, I, I like how based on the cliffhanger from before they get hit everyone blacks out and uh, then it becomes um, they get sent back to the Crimean War. History is different. It's that much is obvious. Um, Russia is actually Sontar now, and uh, they've basically the Sontarans have invaded history. And you know, I think for the most part it worked, and, and it justifies their ex their uh, appearance in the last episode briefly because they used the Lupari shield to get back in time. You know, um, they knew about the flux. The flux wasn't them. But they saw that the Lupari were doing something and took advantage of that. And what I really liked as well is that they made reference to uh, Commander Lynx from the classic series who claimed Earth um, way back when. Uh, that kind of um, reference was really good because it shows that uh, you know they're still aware of their history with Earth. Um, and I think that they... I love how much of a threat they are, okay? So, like... Of course, in the past, in the Crimean War, of course they're going to be a threat against the um, the British Army, and I I was happy to see them actually fighting. I was worried that they were going to take the battle shot from the trailer and have it. That was it um, for a moment, especially when they cut away and uh, they could only hear the battle in the distance. But they did go back for some fighting. Um, it was a massacre. There was basically the British soldiers getting um, absolutely demolished by these Santaran soldiers. Um, but not only that, but it was when they have the present day Santarans as well taking over uh, Liverpool. Um, I think, especially when Dan comes and finds them uh, doing a public execution of some humans, um, that's shows how much of a threat they are like throughout the episode these moments that they take to show how much of a threat they are are, are much appreciated uh now i gotta um talk about the uh the way that the, the companions work in this series immediately after landing in crimea um in the crimean war uh the Dan first starts disappearing into blue light and then followed by Yaz and they get zapped away to different locations Dan lands back in the present-day Liverpool, which is now um, overrun by some Tarans, and the doctor stays in the Crimean War They I, the thing is I wasn't expecting this to happen I thought they would all stay together But I'm kind of glad that they took them away from each other because it meant that the doctor could be um, the doctor in in the Crimean War um, so it's very much a standalone Doctor story if you only look at the that part of it. And then you have Dan in present-day Liverpool dealing with um, the Santarans there. And then Yaz uh, gets launched to uh, the Temple of Atropos, I believe, on the planet of time. Uh, and there, it's there she meets Vinda. Um, so I'm talking about Dan in Liverpool first in present-day with all the Santarans. Um, the one, my first nitpick 
is when he arrives and everyone's like in the houses. Um, first of all, this is very much uh, for me. It reminds me of the Stolen Earth when the Daleks have taken over the planet and everyone's in their houses. You know, it, it does have that kind of feeling. Or also in Turn Left, where uh, history is rewritten and and all the people are like refugees in, in people's houses. It has that same feeling. That is not my nitpick. My nitpick is when uh, Dan appears and there's a whole like platoon of Santarans and they chase in him, the whole platoon, he turns a corner. Um, of course, the Santarans miss the shot, but that's like, a, that's the accepted sci-fi thing is that they're terrible at shooting. But it's the whole platoon becomes just two Santarans in like, turn in one corner. And that's when his parents come and knock them out with frying pans. Like, for me, that was a nitpick. Like, it's my nitpick of the episode, because where did this entire platoon with eyes on Dan disappear to so that it could just conveniently be two so that they could be taken out? That's a nitpick of mine. The rest of the episode in present day Liverpool is um, is pretty uh, it's pretty good. That you, know, you get Dan's parents introduced and they get some good development time to be a part of the action. I don't know whether we'll see them again, um, but they're a welcome addition to the story, uh, especially because Dan gets um, teleported away on his own again um, and then he goes to uh, explore and to try and see what's going on he gets his walk the famous walk from the promotional image and he goes to the Santaran fleet in the present day um, overall I think that this uh, this story arc for him is um, a, it, it's almost pushing it but the fact that he gets caught in the end um, by the Santarans is um, was, was enough for me. I was starting, just at the moment when I was starting to think, oh, come on, this is, seriously, he's, he's broken into all the Suntaran ships and no one has even seen him. That's when he gets caught by the Suntarans. And I think that if it had been any later, I would have been like, come on, like, how, how, how did they not notice he was there? The same thing about um, when he's talking to the Doctor, the Suntarans, they, they're aware of the rogue transmission. So, you know, all of this serves to make the Suntarans more of a threat and uh, makes Dan's story more believable. Um, and I gotta tell you, um, when Dan gets caught by the Suntarans, um, I had a huge smile on my face when Carvinista showed up again to save Dan. Um, and I like that was a great like I wasn't expecting to see him again so soon like that made sense in the story that he was he was still Dan's protector and he was kind of blamed for letting the Santarans in so the, when he shows up again and takes out the Santarans like I thought that was a great moment um, and I really like uh, his character and I hope he shows up again soon. Um, and yeah, he and then they sort of just they send this Santaran ship back into the fleet to start a temporal explosion. So apparently they were never there or something along something along that lines. Um, but oh yeah, so overall the way that that storyline connects with the past storyline, I um, yeah it makes sense. And I think that the um, the the fact that the Doctor is in the Crimean War with Mary Seacole and the Commander. Uh, alone, you get to see her. Uh, you get to see her go up against the Santarans by herself, up against the um, the lieutenant by himself. Um, so I think it, it lets the Doctor be the Doctor in that situation. Um, so and then I equally they all get reunited by the end of the episode. I don't know whether the ta uh, the TARDIS flux um, vortex. Um, thing is going to make them disappear again, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but more um, kind of crazy is the uh, Yaz uh, storyline. So Yaz gets teleported along with Vinda to the Temple of Atropos, and it gives Vinda a chance to interact and sort of come into the fold uh, with, um, with this group. Um, also, Williamson, who built the tunnels in Liverpool in the 1820 storyline, shows up at the Temple of Atropos as well, briefly. Like, it's like he's there, he says a few things that like don't make sense, and then he disappears and we don't see him again. So again, that storyline continues briefly. Um, and it's, it's so mysterious that I, I can't help but want to know more. Like, what, why is he there and how, why does he appear to know so much? 
And then you've got Vinda, who I really like as a character. His interactions with Yaz are great. I um, kind of think that he has a crush on her. Um, and then, basically then, it's not only that. They, they sort of set up this temple as a sort of planet of time. Like, all time flows through there. And the Mori, who are these figures who are kind of broken, are the... Uh, guardians of that. Um, then Swarm appears, the main villain, with Azua, his sister, and somebody else as well called Passenger, who again, no explanation as to why he's there, he just sort of joins them and they welcome him there. Um, and they appear and show again just how much of a threat they are. Like immediately, um, Vinda takes no chances. He opens fire on one of on, on Swarm with his gun, and they can just teleport away, like appear here, there, and everywhere. And there's nothing that he can do. Like he's he's shooting them, and they're just sort of so powerful that you know it's nothing to them. Um, I like how Swarm gets a chance to really uh, intimidate Yaz. Um, shows just how cruel that he can be because he apparently knows a lot more call them linear beings as if like they're more t temporal beings who know like things before they happen and things like that um yeah he's very intimidating and then when the cliffhanger comes and he's about to put all of time energy through yaz and vinda it's a good cliffhanger and i really want to find out what happens next um yeah, what my other nitpick about the episode, while I'm while, while I'm while I remember it, is that in the Crimean War storyline, before the Santarans um, explode um, by the commander, is it Command Lieutenant Logan or whatever? My my nitpick is how does he have the time to load up enough dynamite to blow up the Santaran fleet? Because I remember the Doctor saying like oh, we've only got like 38 minutes until they go into the, um, to refuel from the probic vent. Um, and that's only for seven minutes. So is like, and then she took him there so that, so that Mary Seacole and the, the lieutenant tenant know what to do to really, you know, to break the, the probic vent thing. Um, so they can't refuel. And then she disappears. And is there really enough time for him to, um, l like load dynamite enough to blow up the fleet. It was a bit of a nitpick for me. Let me get get. Let me know what you guys think of that. Um, but yeah, that just seemed to me like a bit of a stretch. But again, both of my nitpicks aren't really that story impacting. Uh, so and, and considering the rest of the story as well, overall I liked it a lot. Um, so the the. The story arc, the overall Flux story continues. Um, this is my sort of um, overall thing. The overall, my overall um, verdict is that the storyline from Flux continues um, in a way that both um, adds to the mystery, makes you want to keep watching. Um, the villains get developed. The Suntarans um, have a good uh, showing in this episode. They get some great lines. There's some brilliant uh, shots, like throughout the battle and in Liverpool when the Suntarans are there. Um, overall, I think that uh, it's a good story. It does it. It does what it uh, should do. The Doctor gets his her chance to shine. Um, but there's these tiny, tiny nitpicks that, that I have against the episode um, that mean that I think I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because uh, the last episode I gave an 8 out of 10 uh, and it was more coherent. Um, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, but again, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next week, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Click like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified when my review goes live. Be sure to check out our gaming channel as well, called uh, youtube.com forward slash skybotgaming, where I've played uh, all of the recent Doctor Who games, including Doctor Who The Edge of Reality on my PlayStation 5. Stay tuned because tomorrow I'm releasing this month's Who News, a monthly interactive series. Watch that and get involved. We'd love to have you comment and be a part of that series. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching everyone. Stay tuned. Happy birthday to Shaq. Go wish him some happy birthdays on his videos. Uh, and yeah, with all that said and done, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!